What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TOJ Talks. I'm your host, Will Parkinson, at WillPod11 on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Will Parkinson, NFL on YouTube. Hope everybody's had a, uh, a great week. Obviously, you know, had a uh, it's been a strong Jets week in, in terms of uh, the Mike Williams signing, in terms of Jadavion Clowney visiting. You know, the Jets always obviously uh, in the news and, you know, a second week of free agency that if you go Friday to, to Friday, the Jets, uh, their second week, you know, in total free agency was much better than the first. It'll be just me and me on the pod. Um, upcoming this week, Charles McDonald, Mike Renner, uh, you know, and, uh, and another guest as well. So it'll be a packed feed. Obviously, you know, Badlands feed is bumping there. Um, I was out in San Francisco this week, did not get to the uh, the Badlands meetup uh, on Thursday night. But, um, you know, obviously a lot of exciting stuff in the works. So make sure you guys are tuned in for that, obviously. Want to hit a couple things here. This will be a quick 10, 15 minutes. I want to hit on the clowny visit, you know, what he could potentially mean. I want to hit a little bit on Mike Williams and that signing. And then just kind of some of the narratives, I guess, a little bit around the Jets right now in terms of, you know, what what could be next in terms of the draft. And, you know, as well, just, you know, as much as hype there was last offseason from the national media, the kind of opposite thing that's happening at the moment, very much predictable. So I'll start with Mike Williams. You know, I, I did the spaces right after the signing and, you know, a lot of folks, uh, you know, hopped in there, which was great. I know Joe Connor had the breakdown of it. I've talked a lot about it. I've tweeted a lot about it. I thought he'd be a really, you know, really solid move. The money came out today. It's really one for eight, one for nine, uh, you know, pretty much fully guaranteed the rest, about six million or so, you know, in upside in terms of games played. There'll be some statistic targets, et cetera. Very much in line with what you would expect from the Jets, right? Um, you know, Williams is a guy, really good player. Two years ago was fantastic. Uh, last year was off to an incredible start. Uh, you know, I shared some of the, you know, the kind of the deep analytics. But that, those first three games, he was spectacular. Uh, you know, and then obviously tears his ACL. He'll be he'll be ready for week one. Um, he'll probably take a little time to get up and running. That's just the way things work, especially during camp, OTAs, things like that. We'll see how much he's you know kind of does. I wondered if it'll be a little bit be a little different than, than Brees Hall, but. Um, you know, who was a little bit later in the year last year, but kind of think it'll be a little bit similar in terms of, you know, probably not practicing much at all in the beginning of camp and slowly start to ramp up. You know, by the time they do those second joint practices, I think you'll start to see Mike Williams pretty much fully integrated into think what things are doing, probably on a pitch count early. Doubt we'll see him in the preseason. Uh, but, you know, week one, I, I think it's reasonable to expect him to be ready to go. And he seems to be thinking he'll be, be ready to go. So, um you know, that's that's from a Mike Williams perspective. Look, I think it opens up their offseason a lot. I, I talked about this uh, two weeks ago. I talked a little bit about this on, on TOJ Talks, you know, last weekend of just what signing Tyron Smith and honestly signing Mike Williams would would do for the Jets in terms of opening up their draft. It opens up the rest of their offseason where they've taken care of surface level needs, right? We thought they needed multiple pass catchers. They still need another one, but needing one more going into the second wave of free agency in the draft is a lot better than needing two. Uh, we thought they needed three offensive linemen, uh, really four or five, including depth. Well, they've signed three already. So now you go into the draft and maybe it's your drafting for depth. Maybe it's your drafting for a starter. There's that. Uh, I think on defense, they've taken care of some needs. I do still think they probably are still a defensive tackle short. Um, they're definitely an edge rusher short and they're, they're probably a safety short. So, um, you know, we'll see there as well. You know, they took care of backup quarterback, obviously. They, again, three starters in the offensive line. A backup quarterback. Um, they still need to add it, you know, on special teams. They took care of all those guys except Justin Hardy at the moment. That's something they need to take care of as well. But generally speaking, the, the way the way signing Mike Williams just it opens up Garrett Wilson. It opens up the Jets playbook a little bit. Help should help a ton in the red zone. You know, Rogers is a guy who who does like to to take some shots vertically, um, you know, towards the sideline, throw a bunch of deep balls, you know, throw some of those steam routes, those cover two hole shots and Mike Williams goes up and gets it better than probably anybody, you know, in the league. Him and T. Higgins are the two guys. I think if I'm, you know, if I was an NFL GM saying who's the best 50-50 guys, this, you know, really the 70-30, you know, type of players. Mike Williams is one of the one, not, he's one of one or one of two, and you know, him and T. Higgins. So, um, again, if he's healthy, he's a guy that, uh, you know, Joe Connor talked a little bit about this, but he's hurt a lot, but plays pretty much always um i know that sounds weird but i think he missed seven games over a five-year stretch that's pretty impressive no matter who you are uh you know at this point in the nfl with just some of the you know injuries he's always gonna be on the injury report this year um you know get used to mike williams questionable tyron smith questionable those guys are not going to practice a ton i'm sure you know i think connor and joe mentioned this as well just having a plan for these guys in terms of you know kind of the sports science side of things in terms of you know the rehab getting them you know ready to go each week that said, you know, uh, again, don't ex I don't want to expect Mike Williams to be full Mike Williams week one, but the Jets don't need him to be full Mike Williams week one. They need him to be, 
you know, kind of like we talked about last year with Brees a little bit, can the second half of the year, can you be your best version of yourself and at least be out there, whether it's as a decoy, obviously Brees came back and was fantastic, you know, start the year. Obviously though, you know, we're still recovering from the knee. We'll see with Williams, but he'll again primary, you know, primary guy that will play outside, gonna block well, big target. He's really well liked. I talked to some people in the Chargers organization this week that basically just said, great player. We didn't want to lose him. Um, great guy. And but, you know, because of the cap situation, the Chargers had to make a choice. And, you know, they let go of Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, obviously. And um, I think both the Bears and Jets should be excited about the players they're getting, you know, in terms of that. So there, there's the Mike Williams kind of, you know, talking point there. Jadevi and Clowney, obviously, in for a visit, had heard it went really well. Um, I heard both sides have interest in getting a deal done again, but, you know, the money's got to be right. I'd expect something one for eight, one for nine, you know, with some upside, some incentives around sacks and, and playing time, et cetera, you know, there. But Jadevi and Clowney takes his time. Again, you know, I recorded on, on Thursday and Mike Williams, in, or Tuesday, and Mike Williams signed about 30 minutes after I recorded. So hopefully that happens again today when I release this, in, you know, Saturday afternoon. But, you know, I just look at Clowney and nine and a half sacks a year ago. I'm going to be posting out some of his film actually here in a moment. Nine and a half sacks, you know, 71 pressures, 20 quarterback hits. Really damn good last year. He's a guy that's mercenary. Wherever he goes, that defense is really good. You know, Baltimore, Cleveland, Tennessee, Houston, wherever it's, you know, it's it's been over the years. He's a one-year deal guy. Um, you know, he's well-liked. He's he'll be a dominant physical force. I think him, JFM, and Jermaine are as physically dominant in terms of the run game as you're going to get in the NFL, obviously, with Quinn and Williams as well. Um, you know, Javon Kinlaw is physically super gifted. Can you keep him on the field and, and things of that nature? Keep him locked in. You hope you can and, and tap into some of that potential. Um, you know, and then obviously Will McDonald's kind of a wild card there and and, and things of that nature. But I, I think you got to get Clowney done. I think it's something that you know, in, in hindsight, yes, is is it a, the biggest need on the team? No, obviously it's not. But it's something that is sneakily a need, and you're going to need to basically replace 10, 10 plus sacks from Bryce Huff. You know, and, and Clowney had that last year he's not the same type of pass rusher he's not this he's not quite as explosive and things like that he's obviously a three down player which is awesome but and we'll be on a one-year deal but yeah look I, I expect the Jets to get Clowney done I, I just you know unless the Panthers come in with a with a really strong offer I think there's that wild card we kind of you know that we talked a little bit about that before Mike Williams too is Clowney's always chased you know some money and there's no reason he shouldn't I, I totally respect it but at the same time, you know, I think both sides probably would like to get a deal done. I just think it's going to come down to the Panthers come in there and say, hey, we'll give you one for 16, minutes, whatever it is. There's that possibility. So that's why I don't think everyone's quite as confident. He usually signs like May or June, maybe even in July. He doesn't really like to do OTAs in camp and stuff like that. And again, you can't blame him. If you don't have to do it, a lot of these vet guys, you know, they'll wait. But um, push comes to shove, I'd probably lean Clowney ends up being a Jet, which would be, you know, again, fill a big need. Um, he will not be rock. I'm sure he would not rock the 24. He rocked last year in, uh, in Houston, in, uh, in Baltimore, obviously because of Revis, but, um, you know, so that's Clowney and that's Clowney and Mike Williams. I want to finish up, you know, with two things here, kind of two greater thoughts in terms of how the jets have kind of what they've done so far and how that kind of changes the perspective for the draft. I talked some about this last weekend, but by, by signing Smith again, and, and Mike Williams, you kind of can do whatever you want at 10 outside of probably taking your edge rusher, defensive tackle, or corner or quarterback. Um, I, I think if you went O-line, you stayed put it, you know, Fontenau, uh, if, maybe it's Fashanu, whoever is, you know, whoever's there at 10. You stick there. You say, listen, we got our left tackle in the future, or we got our left tackle slash, you know, guard flexibility in the future. This guy can replace Moses or Smith next year if either one of them walks or even the one of them gets hurt again or whatever it may be. There's that. You know, if it's fought now, like, um, does he replace, does he win the job against John Simpson in training camp? Or does, you know, Tyron Smith being banged up and they do the X one, like whatever it may be, like, does that happen? Right. Then, you know, it's a long-term piece. Do the Jets stick, stay put and just draft the receiver? I think very much would be in favor of either drafting a line or receiver. I think that's the, the way to move, especially in terms of positional value, in terms of short-term and long-term needs. Obviously, you hope Mike Williams has a really good year and you bring him back next year and it's Mike Williams Garrett again next year and it's rookie wide receiver. Um, you know, and obviously Lazard's money would come off and you feel really good about that trio going forward with maybe a Gibson and a Brownlee as your four and five and you keep drafting guys to kind of supplement those. That's like, that'd be great. Um, I, I get the Brock Bowers argument and I, I don't think it's wrong. Um, I kind of personally would rather the Jets be aggressive and move up to eight, move up to to go get Rome Dunze. Does it, do they go to f up to five and go get Marvin? Like whatever it may be, I think there's a legitimate argument to be made that, you know, you kind of go with the Bengals method of 
you know, we have good a good enough group up front. We have, you know, some depth there. Maybe, not, you know, you if you drafted a Carter Warren, you hope, can he be your sixth best offensive lineman next year? You know, is it Wes Schweitzer's your interior, you know, swing guy? We draft a guy in the third round at offensive line. Patrick Paul, maybe potentially at Houston, who's a developmental guy, at, you know, a tackle. But can him and Carter Warren and Max Mitchell, can one of the three of them be good enough to step in for three games? you know, and help out if Tyron Smith plays only 14 or, you know, can Schweitzer and maybe an interior guy you take in round three or round four be good enough this year to basically, you know, fill in if AVT misses a game, fill in if Tippmann misses a game, whatever it may be. Um, there's a legitimate argument to be made there. And, you know, a Rome, uh, Rome, Mike Williams and Garrett trio is effing incredible. Is could be effing incredible, right? Or, you know, is it trading up for a Marv? Is it trading up for neighbors? Or is it, do you trade back? That's the other situation you sit there and go, if someone wants to come up for maybe one of the quarterbacks to jump Denver, you know, do you, can you drop back to 16, 17, take one of the offensive linemen or take a Brian Thomas Jr.? Can you take an AD Mitchell? It's, you know, whoever it may be, you know, you know, a little bit there, Troy Franklin, et cetera. Maybe there, and you pick up a second round pick that you use on an offensive lineman, or do you take a tackle there? Maybe it's Fontenot, you know, slips to 16, 17. You take him there and you take a receiver in round two with that extra pick. Um, so I, I think the Jets all, you know, all options are on the table. I think there should be an offense heavy draft, whether it's offensive line receiver, potentially taking a running back, um, you know, as well, just can kind of continuing to churn out there. I'd still love to see them make a move on a running back and a safety in, this, in the veteran market, whether it's a Justin Simmons, Quandre Diggs, those type of names, whether it's, you know, Ezekiel Elliott, maybe a JK Dobbins. I'd lean Zeke. He's always healthy. He's great in pass pro. He's great on third downs. This guy can run the ball in short yardage. You can spell Brees Hall from having to like be everything for you. Um, you know, and he can be productive in spurts. Plus, he's a guy who's well liked as well. So, the playoff experience. So, um, that's that. And, th and the last thing I want to hit on here before we wrap again, shorter episode today. I'll be, I got, you know, episodes Tuesday, Thursday, and then a, a big TOJ talks next weekend. This idea of a lot of people getting frustrated with the national media, um, kind of hating on the Jets a lot and doubting their moves and things like that. The Jets were hyped up a ton last offseason. Uh, you know, everyone was like, the Jets are the sneaky Super Bowl team. Everyone was kind of, you know, all aboard that, you know, all aboard that train. And, you know, obviously things didn't go well last year. Seven and 10, Rodgers gets hurt. All the different things. All, all things we know. No one, has, you know, no one knows it better than Jets fans, obviously. Now it's kind of flipped to the everything, you know, doubting the moves. Oh, that Mike Williams got hurt last year. And it's all these, you know, two-year statistics to make everyone think, you know, Tyron Smith played a ton of games last year, but no one wants to talk about that. It was a second team all pro. Mike Williams was fantastic in 2021 and then was good in 2022. Didn't really miss a lot of time at all. And then gets hurt on an ACL. And now all of a sudden he's all, you know, they do the two-year stats with him. Keep people bringing up Brees Hall's injuries. You know, you know, folks saying Sauce Gardner had the best corner in his class. He's a two-time first-team All-Pro in two years, so uh, respectfully, that's bullshit. Um, you get that, and oh, Rogers is old; he's not going to be good. Like all that stuff's getting thrown out there now, right? Because they're doing the opposite of what happened last year. Let people do it. Um, I know it's annoying sometimes. You know, I think everyone has the right to be skeptical about this Jets team. I think there's a lot of questions about the coaching staff. I think there's injury questions, there's age questions, chemistry. I think the offseason is not done yet. We don't; they don't know. We don't know what their their third option, you know, at receiver is going to be or second option, depending on the draft. We don't know, um, you know, the full scope of their offensive line. We don't know the full scope of what the running back room is going to look like, what the defensive tackle room could potentially would look like, safety, et cetera. So all those reasons are fair. I think this is probably the year where let the Jets go in a little under the radar, getting kind of that unnecessary hate. They're not going to be that good. The Jets usually thrive when that happens, it feels like, and, you know, this is a team, let's start out, start out six and three, and all of a sudden people are starting to talk, and Rodgers looks pretty good. Like, I think everyone, even rightfully so, I think they're going to probably win the division. I think they could win the division next year. But I've, I've seen four plays of Rodgers in a Jets uniform, um, you know, outside that Giants preseason game. So I think it's right again for let people be skeptical. Um, it's a good thing. Go prove them wrong. The Jets start winning football games. Everyone will, will, will shut up and it'll start to swing the other way. So, um, uh, not telling everyone how to root or how to react. It's obviously annoying. Sometimes you don't want people to talk, you know, talking shit about your favorite team constantly. Totally get it. Uh, but in this case, like let it happen. Who cares? Tune into Badlands and tune in, turn on the Jets and all that stuff and get the stuff you actually want to hear. And, uh, you know, and we'll go from there, but again, quick 15 today, make sure you guys are tuned into the feed. Uh, the quarter zips are pre-sale. It looks like they're almost already sold out, which is fantastic. Um, 
Again, I'll have the clowny stuff out in you know in a little bit. Make sure you guys are tuned into this. And then again, Charles McDonald, Mike Renner, um, amongst other folks, uh, you know, coming on the pod this week. We'll talk a lot of draft, a lot of offseason stuff. And obviously, if anything happens with the clowny or any other move, we'll hop back on. So appreciate everybody for listening, and we'll talk to you guys uh, next week.